Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to perform a multi-record delete in Oracle ADF. Oracle ADF is based on MVC architecture, which means we want to separate out the business logic from the view layer. So what we're going to do here is create a method inside of our view object that takes employee keys and it's going to delete, it's going to perform a delete on those records on the model layer. And then what we're going to do is provide on the view layer a way to capture the multiple records that the user selected and then connect those together, the model and the view. What I have in here are several view objects. What we're going to focus on is our employees view. If I double click on here, you'll see that there's many different options here. What I want to do is drill down to the Java and I want to enable programmatic access to our Java classes. So the way we do that, one more time, is you go to the Java tab, click on Java classes right here, and check on the generate view object class as well as generate view row class and then hit OK. Now the other thing that I want to do is go to our application module. Keep in mind my employees view is already in there and I'm going to go to the Java right there and do the same thing. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to have programmatic access to our specified class rather than just the generic um, view implementation. So we'll just click on generate application module class. Now let's drill down to our employees view right here and you'll see that there was some code generated for us. Our employees view implementation right here refers to our custom code now and we can add whatever methods we want to. So this represents the view object and then down here represents an individual record in there. That's the view row implementation. Let's focus our, on our employees view implementation right here. And what I'd like to do is provide a method called delete emps and we're going to have that take as its argument a list of employee keys okay now here it's ref referencing lists so I'm going to do an alt enter and make sure that we import java.util list and then for the key make sure we specify oracle.jbo.key now that we have those imported, let's go ahead and do what we need to do. So first of all, we want to make sure that our emp keys does not equal null. And now we're going to loop through this using the Java enhanced for loop. So we'll say for key, we'll call this employee emp keys. So all we're doing here is looping through the different keys. We're going to call the find by key method passing in the key. Okay, so the way we do this is we say this dot find by key and we're going to pass in, you know what, let's just change this variable to k, make it easy on ourselves. And then the second argument is the number one, which represents, okay, we've, we've got a primary key and the first element in that primary key, that, that's the one. When we perform the find by key, it returns an array of row objects. Now, uh, we are hoping that the find by key returns just one record, but if it doesn't, it means it's not unique. Okay, so let's just go ahead and just call this row. Okay, and now we want to just grab the first element in there. So we're going to say row subscript zero. And the data type here is a row. Now to make this a little more robust, we'll just put an if statement in here and we'll say, well, if row does not equal null, and row.length equals 1, then we're going to go through with this code right here. So let's just put our closing curly brace right there. 
make sure we put a semicolon there. Now this is where I want to talk about the specific data type. Instead of saying a generic row, we have our own implementation, which is employees view row impl. In other words, employees view row impl is a subclass of that. So let's put that data type there. And of course, we're going to cast it. Let me right click and reformat to make it look nice. And now the last thing we want to do is just call the remove method on R. Now keep in mind this is not performing a commit. We want to have the commit outside here. The next thing we want to do is test our code. Now before we test it programmatically, let's go ahead and make sure that the application module contains the appropriate view object instances. So we just double click on there and we check out our data model. Okay, so we have a problem here. What we really need is a top level employees view object. Okay, so here's our view, employees view right here. And now we have a top level one. Now that we have that, let's create some test code. So I'm going to right click on my model and create a new Java class. We'll call this test emp delete and make sure we put a main method in there. And now the next thing we need to do is look up our application module. The easiest way to do that is to say configuration. Okay, so this is one of those classes that we can work with and you'll see that there is a oracle.jbo.client. Now configuration has a static method called create root application module. I'm going to do a control space so this will automatically give us the left hand side uh, return the appropriate data type. So we go like that. Now the first argument needs to be the name, the fully qualified name of our app module. So here we have com.fireboxtraining.model.appmodule. The second argument is going to be the name app module and we just tack on the word local. Okay, so what you always do is you take this name right here and tack on the word local. So now that we have access to our application module, let's make this variable name a little bit shorter. We'll just call it app mod. Now the next thing we want to do is make sure that we have the appropriate class name here. So remember how we created our own custom application module class. So when we enabled the Java, uh, let's just go to our application module right here. Check out this name. It's actually app module impl. It is a subclass of application module. So here we'll just go in here. And of course we want to cast it. And now we can do something with it. So here's our app mod and we're going to call the get employees view 2 because remember employees view 2 was our was our uh, view object instance. I'm going to hit control space so it returns the appropriate thing here. Double click on that and let's just call this emp view to make it easier to work with smaller variable name. So there's our emp view and our next thing we want to do is say emp view dot delete emps passing in a list. Now we need to specify what we are deleting. Okay so let's just leave this like it is and we're going to instantiate a couple key objects. So I'm going to say key k equals, do an alt enter to import oracle.jbo.key and we're going to say new key. Now when you're instantiating a key object you need to pass in an array of objects okay because you might have a compound key. So we're going to go in here and say new object square brackets and then we can do our curly braces right here and I'm going to pass in 
big decimal because our key for our employees is a big decimal data type. So I'll say new big decimal. And I just happen to know that, here let me do Alt uh, Enter to import that. I just happen to know that uh, we have a couple employees, 1904 as well as 1905 that we want to delete. Okay, so now that we've instantiated that big decimal, uh, let's go ahead and make sure that we have an array list or some kind of list implementation of keys. So we're going to say in here, list key emps equals new array list. We're using generics to specify what data type we're working with. Alt enter to import java.util.list. Okay, so we have this list, we have this key, we want to add the key to the list. So we'll say emps.add, passing in our key. Okay, so let's create yet another key. And we're going to make this 1905 and then say emps.add like that. Let's change this variable here to emps and of course we want to perform a commit in here to make our changes stick. So the way we perform a commit is we take our application module and call our get transaction method. It returns a transaction object and then we simply call commit. Now before we actually run our code, let's just make sure that 1904 and 1905 actually exist in our database. So let's just do a select star from employees where employee ID in 1904 and 1905. Okay, so yes, we do have these two records in here. So let's go ahead and run our code and make sure everything's running as expected. So right click and run it. And I'm just going to bring open my log right here and exit code zero, that's a good sign. Let's go in here and rerun our query. No row selected, so we did indeed delete those records. Now do keep in mind that if we had foreign key restrictions, for example, if these records had children records, then of course this would throw an exception, and you need to provide the appropriate handling. You need to decide whether you're going to first delete the children records, or perform an update, or do whatever to fix the problem. Now how do we tie this in with our view layer? For example, on the JSF side, if we have a table with multiple select capabilities, how do we bind this to the method? Well, we're going to explain that in our next video tutorial, so just check out our channel. Well, I hope you found this video tutorial very useful. Please visit us at our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.